The Greek revival style owes its origin to Greek temples, especially the Parthenon, and nearly everything we build can be traced to the same place. Here's a modern replica of the Parthenon in Nashville. They copied every detail from the Greek original. I never really appreciated the Greek revival style until I started traveling all over the country doing road shows. Now I recognize architectural elements from that period everywhere. Classically inspired pediments like this one in Providence, Rhode Island with diagonal dental blocks were really popular upgrades for wealthy homeowners in the early 19th century. The Greek revival style was especially popular in the South. I stopped to pet this cat at Roanoke, William Faulkner's home in Oxford, Mississippi. Here's a Greek revival pediment flanked by two windows. The steep pointed gable has a gothic look. Greek revival pediments can be arched too, like this elliptical transom. Surprisingly, Greek revival ornamentation wasn't limited to homes on the East Coast or Southern plantations. This handsome door is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And this Italian at home is in Manchester, Vermont. I like the eave brackets and a simple elegant pediment design. Second Empire homes also relied on Greek Revival pediments, like the matching dormers in this mansard roof. Here's another Victorian, a bit of a stick-style home with another pediment design that's easy for a carpenter to build. But the example that sticks with me, the one I'll never forget, I found in Utah while camping one year. If you're ever near the town of Fruita while visiting Capitol Reef National Park, don't miss visiting the old schoolhouse. Built at the very end of the 19th century, the carpenters who built this log cabin didn't skip the important details of window and door trim. Yep, that's a Greek Revival pediment, and it's decorated with a lozenge, a triangular shape that sometimes is called a rhombus. The windows are trimmed the same way. The trim around this window actually fits into several periods. The Greek Revival pediment has a Victorian or Italian look because of the Gothic pendants. The tapered casing gives it a craftsman look, too. Each of the details are designed for durability. There are no flat surfaces. Water drains off quickly. But the angles on the pediment are chosen very carefully, so they'll make a carpenter happy. The pediment rises at a 150 degree angle, so the pitch is 30 degrees. That makes it easy to miter on a miter saw. A 30 degree pitch is mitered at 15 degrees. Before we get into the miters, let's look at layout. You can swing the angles on a pediment with a protractor, but protractors are never precise, and trust me, cutting all these pieces is a lot more fun if they all work perfectly the first time. In the last few years, Mike Slogan has taught me to rely on math for perfection, and in this case, that means using a construction calculator and doing all the layout off of a right angle. Once we define a right angle within the pediment right to the peak, it's easy to determine all the dimensions. We need to know only two of those dimensions in order to learn all the others. And we already know the pitch and the run, which can be measured from the inside of the wing to the center of the pediment. On a Construction Master calculator, or on your Apple iPhone Inch Calc Plus, enter 30 and press the pitch key. That's the pitch. Then enter the run, in this case, 11 and a quarter inches, and press the run key. Next, press the rise key and the calculator will tell you exactly how tall the pediment is above the wing. Finally, press the diagonal key and the calculator will give you the measurement of the diagonal. Use that measurement to check the layout of the 30 degree angle and use that measurement to cut both pieces of right top cap and crown. Now let's talk about the miters again. The molding really turns a 150 degree angle from the wing to the rake. But most remodelers and framers wouldn't see that angle. Instead, they'd see the pitch of that roof at 30 degrees and have no problem mitering the crown at 15 on their miter saw. After all, they're accustomed to working with speed squares. But finished carpenters aren't. And besides, that approach backs you into a corner at the peak of the pediment. Here's why. If the bottom angles are 30 degrees, then the top angle must be 120 degrees. The angles in a triangle added together must equal 180 degrees. Now, you could look at the top 120 degree angle and say, gee, I need the supplementary angle in order to swing my saw to the correct miter. But who in the world's going to think of that? I know I sure wouldn't. 
Honestly, most finished carpenters would reach for a protractor to find all the angles, and that's easy to do if you add normal protractor angles to your miter saw gauge. Miter saw gauges don't work well for finished carpenters because they say zero when you're cutting a 90 degree butt cut, which works perfectly for a framer who measures everything off 90 degrees to the back of a rafter or a board. For finished carpenters, to make your miter saw protractor friendly, right next to where it says zero, write 90 with a black sharpie. Where it says 10, write 80. Where it says 20, write 70. And go all the way past 45 because those angles are smaller than 45 degrees. They're not bigger. Now you can figure the miters on the pediment quickly. The bottom angle of 150 degrees miters at 75 degrees and the top angle of 120 degrees miters at 60 degrees. Just the way it would inside your head. A scale drawing and planning ahead is always the first step in building anything, especially if you want to avoid mistakes and improve productivity. Now let's build this Greek Revival Victorian head.